Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, good afternoon for some of you. Uh, good morning. Uh, do you hear me? Please confirm on the chat. Great, thank you very much. Uh, hello, one more time. My name is uh, Marcin Maciąg. I'm co owner and CEO in European Laboratory Lifeline Diag. And this is our webinar. Uh, it's for our customers, for our partners, for our fans from whole world. So that's why I told uh, good evening, good afternoon, and also uh, good morning, because here are people from the US. And uh, topic for today's uh, webinar is, uh, in my opinion, very important. Alzheimer's disease, how to protect your brain. Uh, Alzheimer's disease is one of the most dangerous diseases uh, our times. So that's why I'm happy that uh, we can talk today about uh, this. And uh, I'm very proud that our special guest for today evening is a special person. It's uh, our partner from the UK, Ms. Katarzyna Blachowiak. Uh, Ms. Blachowiak is a certified functional medicine practitioner and a certified nutritionist who specializes in clinical dietetics and elemental hair analysis. She graduated from Functional Medicine University in the United States and she completed courses in dietetics organized by Functional Medicine Coaching Academy from Chicago. Functional medicine is a science-based approach that focuses on identifying and addressing the root cause of disease. She is also the author of the publications in health magazine Diet Point. In her professional work, she teaches her patients a conscious approach to nutrition and shaping a healthy lifestyle. Using the right diagnostics methods like elementary hair analysis, and uh, detailed nutritional history, she recognizes the root cause of the disease and helps eliminate them. One uh, of the most important uh, topic for her is uh, Alzheimer's disease. That's, uh, I'm happy that uh, she is our special guest uh, today. So, uh, Mrs. Blachowiak, uh, welcome and uh, please start your uh, presentation. Pani Katarzyna, mikrofon. Sorry. Uh, thank you, Martin. I appreciate the introduction. It's great to be speaking with all of you today. Uh, the topic of today's webinar is Alzheimer's disease, how to protect your brain. Alzheimer's uh, is the most common cause of dementia. Researches conducted show that in 2019, uh, there were over 850,000 people of dementia in the UK. Alzheimer's disease is caused by the abnormal buildup of proteins in and around brain cells. Uh, one of the proteins involved is called amyloid. Amyloid deposits form plaques around brain cells. Uh, the second protein is called tau. Tau deposits uh, form tangles within brain cells. Alzheimer's uh, changes begin in the part of the brain that uh, affects learning. As Alzheimer's advances through the brain, it leads to increasingly severe symptoms, including uh, mood and behavior changes, uh, disorientation, and later deepening confusion about events, place and time, and finally difficulties speaking, swallowing and walking. Um, here you can see on the picture 
a normal brain on the left and a late stage Alzheimer's brain on the right. So uh, we can observe Alzheimer's brain shrinkage. Uh, scientists discovered the four known genes that cause Alzheimer's disease. These are amyloid precursor protein APP, presenilin 1 and presenilin 2, and APOE epsilon 4. And in 1901, German psychiatrist allows Alzheimer identified the first case of Alzheimer's disease, named after him, and a 50-year-old woman, Augusta Dieter. Uh, Alves Alzheimer's first linked dementia to characteristic pathological changes in the brain. What's uh, it's important, uh, it took place 20 years after the launching of sugar and fine flowers in unlimited quantities on the general market, which is not without significance. Alzheimer's is being called by many scientists diabetes type 3. 60% uh, of cognitive decline is related to blood sugar and insulin plays a key role in the formation of amyloid plaques. Uh, the blood sugar level is one of the most important biomarkers of our health. Chronically elevated blood sugar causes insulin resistance and inflammation. If we eat too many carbohydrates, we damage our insulin receptors in the brain. And when those became damaged and fewer in number, it's harder for insulin to get into the brain and the brain becomes insulin resistant. The memory center of the brain is called the hippocampus. Uh, shrinkage uh, can occur in the hippocampus earlier than in other parts of the brain. The hippocampus is especially vulnerable to big spikes and peaks in blood sugar. Uh, the reason of, for this is that the hippocampus needs more insulin uh, that, uh, than most of the rest of the brain does. The more sugar we eat and the higher your insulin level is, the less insulin gets into the brain and it starves the hippocampus of energy and it causes hippocampus shrinkage, which is very dangerous. Uh, some studies have found that type 2 diabetes and hyperinsulinemia increase the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. And the link between hyperinsulinemia and Alzheimer's disease is insulin degraded enzyme, ADE. ADE degrades both insulin and amyloid beta peptide. Um, it's a short peptide found in excess in the Alzheimer's brain. What's important, ADE has a preference for insulin it means that if you have uh, high levels of insulin and glucose, of course, it keeps this enzyme occupied all the time. The enzyme ends up being so busy trying to break down the insulin that it neglects its duties of breaking down amyloid plaques. It's called competitive inhibition. Uh, what is the connection uh, about um, between uh, epigenetics and Alzheimer's prevention? Epigenetics is the study uh, of how your behaviors and environment can cause changes that affect the way your genes work. Unlike genetic changes, epigenetic changes are reversible and do not change your DNA sequence, which is very important, but they can change how your body reads a DNA sequence. Epigenetic changes 
uh, affect the gene expression to turn genes on or and off. Uh, since your environment and behavior, such as exercise or diet, can result in epigenetic changes, it is easy to see uh, the connection between your genes and your environment and your behaviors. The brain cells do continue to grow uh, throughout our lifetime. And it just so happens that the area of the brain where this growth occurs is in the brain's memory center called hippocampus. The growth of new brain cells, uh, which is called neurogenesis, um, is under uh, the, the direction of a brain hormone, BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic hormone. Uh, sorry, factor. Uh, BDNF strengthens brain cells, enhances the formation of synapses, and also induces the growth of new neurons. In JAMA Neurology in January 2014, researchers published, published a very compelling report in which they studied more than 2,000 adults uh, free of de uh, dementia, they found that those individuals who had mm, the highest BDN levels at the beginning of the study had a risk of developing uh, Alzheimer's disease uh, that was less than half uh, of those whose BDN levels were low. What's interesting, the study also described that there are two powerful lifestyle factors that can lead to higher levels of BDNF. These are aerobic exercise and a reduction in carbohydrate consumption. Exercise is the most effective way to increase your BDNF. Uh, exercise also improves uh, your blood flow to the brain, what is critical because uh, blood delivers oxygen and essential nutrients so important for our brain. Another important point to mention is neuroplasticity. A neuroplasticity refers to the brain's ability to change and modify and adapt both structure and function throughout life and in response to various experience. Dr. Michael Merzenich is called uh, the father of modern neuroplasticity. Let, uh, let me call Dr. Michael Merzenich. Your brain Every brain is a work in progress. It is plastic. From the day we are born to the day we die, it continuously revises and remodels, improving or slowly refining as a function of how we use it. We have the ability to speed up the work of the brain and also remodel it by creating a you know, connection between uh, neurons and even stimulating the creation of new neurons. We can influence the brain but by challenging ourselves intellectually, exercising physically and mentally, and eating uh, a healthy diet, which is also very important. Neuroplasticity and epigenetics are closely related. Uh, the introduction of epigenetic lifestyle changes, such as fasting, exercise, or ketogenic diet, uh, lead to increased ketone levels. Ketones uh, are very important for our brain because uh, they are regulators that can alter the methylation and methylation of genes. There are many ways to stimulate the brain. 
like So one of the most powerful antioxidants. Uh, chronic deprivation is a factor contributing to the degeneration of the brain and the nervous system. What is the effect of food on brain health? And what is food causes? Obesity, obesity, uh, depression, more uh, uh, brain fog. If the body gets less than six hours of food a night over a period of two hours, seven hundred percent enzyme reactions are disrupted. Enzymes are very important for our substances, but sugar, salt, and chemicals reaction in the body uh, necessarily. There is a major scientific discovery in the state of Newton. The normal sleep cycle is regulated by the state of Newton, but was discovered, but has been discovered by American human biologist uh, Michael Walker. And but the, uh, the mechanism behind the biological cells are responsible for uh, quality and body temperature, metabolic processes, hormone secretion, and blood sugar levels. Long term disturbance of the circadian rhythm causes a changing of the brain, neurodegenerative changes. Uh, also disrupt the integrity of uh, the gut and also benefit the blood brain barrier. Another amazing scientific discovery is uh, the lymphatic system. Oh, th there is some problem with the uh, microphone, I guess, because this, the sound became yes, a little bit worse for a moment. And so, how is now? Now it's okay. Now it's okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, I will try again. Another amazing scientific uh, discovery is uh, the lymphatic system, which was described and named in 2013 as a system for waste clearance in the central nervous system. When the lymphatic system fails to function properly, uh, for example, as a result of trauma or of aging, um, various toxins begin to build up in the brain, forming the amyloid plaques, uh, which are typical for Alzheimer's disease. In the case of insufficient sleep, the lymphatic system has no chance to cleanse the brain of metabolic waste uh, like uh, beta amyloid proteins, tau proteins, which are associated with the development of Alzheimer's. Here are some tips how to improve your sleep. We should uh, have a consistent wake up time uh, stop caffeine at 2 p.m. Do not 
Please do not drink alcohol three hours before bedtime and do not exercise four hours before bedtime. Um, also, in the, it's important to exposure to sunlight in the morning, in the morning and lowering the temperature in the bedroom for the night and uh, limiting exposure to blue light. Blue light um, is the kind of light emitted by computer screens, phones and tablets and it's very disruptive uh, to hormone activity. Research shows that blue light exposure significantly reduces the amount of melatonin secreted by the brain's pineal gland. This has detrimental effects on, on the quality of the sleep and the duration of the sleep. The reduced quality of sleep has been associated with a number of issues, including Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, and obesity. I would like to tell you something about um, our mi microbiome and its relationship between stress. The relationship between stress and the, the microbiome is bidirectional. The microbiome impacts the way your body responds to stress, but stress impacts the microbiome. Stress alters the movements in the gut called motility. Motility is one of the factors which keeps in the microbiome well organized and stress also may uh, kill certain bacteria. The microbes in the gut have receptors for the stress hormones. When we are nervous, the signals also go directly to the microbes, which changes the, the expression of their genes and the behavior of microbes in the gut. When their balance is disrupted, the gut syndrome the leakage of the intestinal barrier leads to increased permeability of the blood brain barrier. The blood brain barrier is the physical and biochemical structure that separates blood from brain tissue. The blood brain barrier protects uh, the brain from bacteria, chemicals, and viruses. Um, disturbances in the in intestinal microbiome and inflammation uh, increase the permeability of the blood-brain barrier, which leads, leads to the formation of the so-called leaky brain. Leaky brain is exacerbated by the negative influence of inflammatory mediators, drugs, and various toxins. I would like to tell you now the ro um, more about the role of the microbiome. The microbiome is uh, the collection of microbes that lives in uh, our body with their genetic material and metabolic products. Uh, the microbiome includes bacteria, parasites, viruses, yeast, and fungi. And let me quote uh, Dr. Leo Galan. There is in the thousand times more types of DNA from bacteria in your body than there is DNA that belongs to you. Bacteria growing in your gut affect uh, every other aspect of your body. Uh, your body does not exist without this bacteria. They especially affect the function of the brain. Over 90% of the substances, the chemicals circulating in your blood, are not produced by your own cells. They are produced by your by the microbes, most of whom are in your gut.
And what's very important, more than 50% of our antibodies are pro produced in our gut. It means that the center immune system is in the gut. If there is an imbalance in the microbiome, for example, caused um, by food intolerances, then uh, parasitic microbes often begin, begin to multiply. They produce neurotoxins uh, and cause brain damage. For this reason, early dementia is more common in people with gluten intolerance. But eating habits like a diet high in refined carbohydrate and low in fiber, uh, exposure to pesticides, herbicides, and uh, preservatives, uh, drugs, antibiotics, and alcohol lead to a disturbed bacterial balance. There are studies uh, linking intestinal dysbiosis with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's diseases and other neurological disorders. Changes in the composition of uh, the microflora induce uh, increased permeability of the intestinal barrier and stimulate uh, the immune system, leading to systemic inflammation, which impairs the blood-brain barrier and promotes inflammation of the brain, nervous system, and also neuronal damage, and finally, neurodegeneration. And there are many ways how to improve your gut microbiome. We should use prebiotics, which are substances supporting the multiplication and growth of beneficial intestinal bacteria like uh, garlic, leek, onion, chicory, uh, and omega-3 fatty acids uh, like fish, chia seeds, linseed, which nourish a healthy microbiome. We should uh, eat fermented products like sauerkraut, uh, and supplement uh, probiotics, especially good quality probiotics. Uh, we should avoid products um, causing inflammation, uh, so processed foods, uh, high carbohydrate foods, and not organic vegetables and fruits. Now, I would like to say more about uh, the diet. Let me start with the definition of um, the term sugar, according to Dr. Ben Johnson. It's quite funny. Let me define sugar for you. Sugar is bread, sugar is pasta, sugar is noodles, sugar is grains, oats, wheat, rye, all the grains. Uh, that includes corn, which of course includes corn chips. That includes mm, potatoes and other starches, which of course includes potato chips. So, if it's white or was white, essentially don't put it uh, in uh, your mouth unless it's cauliflower. So, it means that all products with a high glycemic index are harmful to our health due to the fact that, that they excessively raise the level of glucose in the blood. The diet for, for Alzheimer's disease should be a low carbohydrate diet. We should choose foods with a low glycemic index and low glycemic load. Let me define the term glycemic load. Glycemic load is a measure that takes into account the amount of carbohydrate in a portion of food together with how quickly it raises blood glucose levels. Products with a low glycemic index and low glycemic load are also very beneficial for the microbiome. 
unfortunately eating foods uh, with a high glycemic load such as sugar sweets bread sodas causes inflammation in the, uh, of the brain low carbohydrate diet is a diet rich in multicolored vegetables please avoid starchy vegetables such potatoes or sweet potatoes um, and healthy fats with a certain amount of nuts and low glycemic fruits such as blueberries blackberries and uh, citrus the proteins should also be included but only in a limited amount we should uh, eat uh, also fatty fish such as mackerel uh, wild salmon sardines herring um, and free range chicken eggs uh, such a low carbohydrate diet stabilizes blood sugar levels and also maximizes uh, the amount of nutrients uh, especially those important uh, for the brain Um, all vegetables, especially green leafy vegetables and um, broccoli and cauliflower are the most important um, to brain health um, because they contain uh, anti-inflammatory substances and uh, many antioxidants. We should buy fresh, unprocessed, preferably organic products. Please avoid all chemical additives uh, such as preservatives or flavor and aroma enhancers as well as pesticides as herbicides because these substances destroy the gut flora uh, another important risk factor related to Alzheimer's disease is food intolerances. The development of Alzheimer's disease may also be affected by food intolerances, especially uh, to dairy and gluten. Dr. Aristo Wojdziani, in a study published in 2013, uh, confirmed that in people with celiac disease, neurons become inflamed. In this case, an elimination diet should be followed. Not all types of fats are healthy for the brain. We should avoid trans fats. Uh, trans fats are made by a process, process of using heat and pressure to add hydrogen molecules to vegetable oils. This changes the chemical property of the oils, allowing them to solidify at a room temperature. Trans fats are very harmful for the brain because uh, they have the wrong structure. Their consumption causes the body to produce new cells from this mm, defective material. It leads to the development of inflammation also in the brain products uh, containing trans fats are fast food like fries uh, chips sticks crackers chocolate cookies uh, cakes powders soups and sauces margarine and bread A diet that works for the brain is rich in healthy fats, such as avocado fat, nuts, coconut oil, and olive oil. Uh, what's worth mentioning, over 50% of the fat in coconut oil is medium-chain MCT fatty acids, which are easily digestible due to their shorter structure. In a low carbohydrate diet, MCT fatty acids can also turn into ketones. Ketones, is, um, ketones are alternative fuel for the brain 
form in the process of breaking down fats into so-called ketosis. MCP fatty acids uh, have the ability to cross the blood-brain barrier. It makes them a good source of energy for neurons. Uh, especially they protect nerve cells from damage by free radicals. What's uh, very important, the ketogenic diet alters the brain's metabolism, so it uses ketone bodies as an energy source. Mayo Clinic researchers publishing in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease verified the impact of diet on the risk of developing dementia. They discovered that uh, the risk of dementia in people who consume excess carbohydrates has increased by almost 90%. Uh, those whose calories were primarily from healthy fat reduced the risk of uh, Alzheimer's by approximately 40 44%. DHA is an omega-3 fatty acid, which is very important for the brain health. DHA represents over 90% of all the omega-3 polyunsaturated fatty acids in the brain. DHA is uh, especially concentrated in the gray matter, and it also uh, and is also an important part of the cellular membrane of neurons. DHA also um, um, has an important role to play in the functioning and structure of mitochondria, uh, the expression of DNA, and the release of neurotransmitters, and also um, the management of neuroinflammation, the creation of the myelin insulation around every neuron, and even the growth uh, of brain cells. Uh, we can't produce too much uh, DHA, so it's very important to supplement. Uh, DHA and other omega 3s help resolve chronic inflammation by activated, activating so-called specialized pro-resolving mediators, SPMs. Uh, these pro-resolving mediators uh, are involved in controlling the be behavior of platelets and white blood cells during inflammation, triggering a self-healing mechanism which speeds up the recovery process. Another amazing scientific discovery is uh, the endocannabinoid system. The endocannabinoid system is a complex cell signaling system identified in the early 1990s. Uh, it plays role in regulated uh, many functions and processes, including uh, memory, reproduction, fertility, sleep, appetite, and mood. There are two well-studied chemical components of this system, anandamate and 2-AG. They um, bind to a specific cell surface receptor, which leads to inflammation, uh, fat storage, and fat production. Uh, omega 3 is like um, DHA and um, EPA are able to produce other cannabinoids that inhibit this receptor stimulation and help to reduce inflammation uh, in the body. Another important risk factor related to Alzheimer's disease is AGEs. AGEs is an acronym for Advanced glycation ethanol products. 
uh, glycation is a reaction in which sugars are bonded with either lipids or proteins. When this bonding takes place, a product called glycotoxin is formed. A new research done in 2014 has found that AGEs uh, are also a risk factors for Alzheimer's disease. Uh, What's uh, interesting, studies has, uh, have shown that regular consumption of AGEs-rich products stimulates um, the formation of uh, beta-amyloid uh, uh, gliosis and cognitive decline. Uh, there are some uh, brain things which we should try to avoid and eliminate. The neurotoxic substances are heavy metals such as mercury and lead, aluminum, pesticides, herbicides, uh, dioxins, phthalates, bisphenol A, which is an endocrine disruptor, nitrites and nitrates, and they are preservatives. Uh, and they causing insulin resistance. We can find uh, those toxins in food, uh, cosmetics, air, and cleaning products. The two main neurotoxins that should be particularly avoided are glyphosate, which is a component of many herbicides, and artificial sweeteners. Uh, because they damage uh, the microbiome and negatively affecting, affect the metabolism and impair the immune system. Israeli scientists have shown in laboratory that artificial sweeteners uh, cause um, intestinal dysbiosis which leads to changes in the metabolism, especially sugar metabolism. Artificial sweeteners like saccharine, sucralose, aspartame, and others uh, are associated with an increased risk of weight gain and even type 2 diabetes. Aspartame is also an excitotoxin and kills neurons. Uh, there are increased amounts of heavy metals that are deposited in the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease. Um, these heavy metal deposits uh, seem to be the major contributing factor to the amyloid protein deposits which are typical uh, for the brain of people with Alzheimer's. Uh, Dr. Daniel Newsom says that there are two particular heavy metal toxin compounds that massively uh, affect our brains and nervous system. Uh, the first one is uh, the combination of fluoride and mercury, and the second one is the combination of fluoride and aluminum. Um, they cause neuron death as they kill those brain cells. Proteins are deposited in those areas and we have the amyloid protein deposits. How to detect and remove heavy metals? Uh, vitamins and minerals are essential to remove heavy metals. Uh, magnesium and silicon neutralize aluminum and zinc and selenium neutralize mercury. Iodine removes excess fluoride and BPA. Uh, the results of the elemental hair 
analysis will tell you about the concentration of dietary and toxic elements in your body. I highly recommend this test to improve, to improve your brain health. Uh, we can remove heavy metals and aluminum using, uh, for example, cilantro, chlorella, glufotione and zeolite. Another important point to mention is hydration. Adequate hydration is essential to cleanse the body of toxins. We need a lot of fluid, uh, both inside and outside the cell, to get rid of waste products via the lymph. Dehydration is harmful to the brain. It can cause neurolog uh, neurological symptoms and uh, and the brain to shrink. We shouldn't drink tap water or water from plastic bottles uh, containing bisphenol uh, and other harmful substances. Water must be cleaned with a filter or ozone generator and stored in a glass container. You should uh, add a small amount of Himalayan salt to it because as Dr. Ben Johnson said, the life of the water is minerals. Not only a proper diet is important, but fasting as well. Another way to cleanse the body is intermittent fasting. It means fasting every day for about 16 hours and uh, restricting your daily eating window to approximately eight hours. Do not eat anything for at least three hours before bedtime. The last point I would like to discuss is supplements. Um, supplements which are very useful to prevent Alzheimer's disease are uh, DHA. Uh, I recommend 1000 milligrams daily. MCT oil. Um, two tablespoons of coconut oil. Another important supplement uh, is um, vitamin B complex, which lowers the level of homocysteine, uh, the excess of which disturbs cognitive function. Uh, vitamin D, um, because a lower vitamin D level is associated, associated with cognitive decline. Vitamin D um, affects more than 800 different genes. Uh, vitamin D also controls the insulin function uh, in the brain. Another important uh, supplement is melatonin. Some new researches show that melatonin can repair the blood-brain barrier. Um, prebiotics and probiotics for a healthy microbiome. And the last supplement is whole coffee fruit concentrate, uh, which increases protein BDNF, which helps to grow new neurons. The supplement should be taken in the evening. Um, Thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, please visit my website, diet-designer.com. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. My email address is contact at diet-designer.com. Thank you very much again for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, thank you for today's uh, presentation, Kasiu. Uh, I'm sure it was very valuable for all of us. Uh, there was a lot of uh, 
very specific information. And of course, if you have any questions, please send email or call to Kasia. You can also contact with us and uh, we send her your questions. Uh, Kasia is one of our uh, partners, so you can uh, feel free to contact with her to uh, discuss your uh, her analysis test results. So thank you very much for being with us and of course uh, feel invite for our another webinars uh, in the near future. Thank you very much and uh, see you soon. Stay healthy, stay safe. Bye bye.